Section 1.6 is all about taxes, specifically income taxes. There's a little bit of discussion here at the beginning about early income taxes, which started as flat taxes. And the term flat tax just means that the tax is a given percentage of what's being taxed. So for instance, if someone's home was valued at $215,000, and they paid $3,200 in taxes, their tax rate was the percentage that they paid, which turns out to be about 1.5%. Or if the problem were given with the value of the home and we were told the property tax rate is 1.5%, for instance, we could calculate the amount owed in taxes by finding 1.5% of the value of the house. This is just like sales tax back in section 1.2. A flat tax is just where you take a percentage of whatever is being taxed, whether it's a sale, whether it's a house, or even if it was an income, you just take whatever percentage of the total and you're done. So it's a quick and easy calculation. Now, modern income taxes tend to be a little bit more complicated, but it's just kind of one step up from this where we use what's called a progressive tax. And a progressive tax means that different dollar values get taxed at different rates. So you may have heard the term tax bracket. This just tells you roughly where someone's income falls in this list. And different levels of income get taxed at different values. And so we'll see the details of that as we go through this section. But that's kind of the broad idea. So a flat tax is just a consistent percentage no matter what amount you're taxing, you just take a percentage of that and you're done. A progressive tax divides up the amount that you're taxing into brackets and charges different percentages, usually higher percentages for higher amounts. That's the term progressive, gives that idea of higher tax percentages for higher values. A regressive tax would be the opposite, where you charge lower percentages for higher values, so higher incomes would actually pay lower taxes. I've got an example here, again going back to the history of income tax in the US around the Civil War, of the difference between these two. It turns out the first one was a flat tax and the second one was a progressive tax. So the progressive tax basically said that incomes over $600 would pay 3%, and then incomes over $10,000 would pay 5%. And so we'll break down the details of this, but the key idea to take away from this is that the progressive tax rate doesn't apply to all of your income. In other words, you don't look at your highest percentage and say, okay, the highest tax rate I'm gonna see is 15%. You don't then take 15% of your whole tax, taxable income. Instead, your income is basically split into buckets, and each bucket gets taxed at a different rate. So let me show you how this works. If we look at some modern tax rates, here's part of a tax table that we'll see a little bit later. This says that incomes up to $9,875 are taxed at 10%. Then from that dollar amount up to 40125 gets taxed at 12%. Now what this doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that somebody making 35,000 would owe 12% of the full 35,000 that they earned. Instead, their first $10,000 or so would get set aside and the government would take 10% of that. Then every dollar after that first 10,000 up to their $35,000 max would then get taxed at 12%. So the 12% only applies to part of their income, which is good news. It means that you pay less tax on your early dollar amounts. So people who make $10 million still only pay 10% on their first $9,875 and 12% on their next 30 or so thousand dollars. But at the upper end, their um, sort of high dollars get taxed at a higher tax rate. So that's kind of the, the way the system is designed to work. So in our example, we've picked someone who makes uh, around $80,000 a year, and we've split their money into their brackets. So 
our taxpayer makes 82350 So the tax table goes higher than this, but since this 22% one ends at 85000 we don't tip over that into the next tax bracket. So we can stop here with these three. And we basically split their $80,000 into three buckets. The first $9,875, the next $30,000 or so, and then the next $42,000 or so. Get split into these three buckets. We figure out how much is in each bucket and multiply by the right percentage. So here we take their 9875 times 10%, and we figure out the amount of tax that's owed from that first bucket. Then in the next one, we subtract these limits to find how much fits in that second bucket. So the second bucket got filled up and overflowed. So when it fills up, we find the difference between these limits, and then multiply by 12%, and that tells us how much tax comes from the second bucket. And then in the third bucket, we don't actually fill up the third bucket. We just go up to 82350 which is the taxpayer's taxable income. And so we find how much is in that third bucket by subtracting their income minus the starting value for that bucket. And then multiply by 22%, and so they owe just over $9,000 from that segment. So they have kind of three buckets, three segments, and you figure out how much money is in each one. So you can kind of visualize them getting paid in singles and then arranging these single dollar bills into stacks. They fill up a stack of 9875 then they move to the next stack until they get to 40125 then they move to the next stack. And you're just counting how many dollars are in each stack and then taking the right percentage of them. Then once you know that, the total tax they owe is those three tax amounts added together. So they owe a total of about $14,000 in income tax for that year. Everything else in this section is kind of details around that. That's the core concept for using this tax table uh, to calculate tax that's owed on a certain taxable income. Here's a full table, and this is the one from 2020, uh, with tax rates that go all the way up. And notice that the highest tax bracket is 37% and that's any amount more than 500,000. Notice also that there are different categories here. You could be single or married filing separately. So if you file your taxes separately from your spouse or if you're unmarried and you're filing as a single taxpayer, you pay on different amounts. If you're married filing jointly, basically you just add your incomes together and so these, these amounts here are basically the amounts, uh, this single amount doubled, at least at first. And, and toward the higher levels, it uh, kind of deviates a little bit. But early on, um, it's kind of just double whatever the single taxpayer owes. And then head of household is a little bit different category. Um, and it's described here, it's basically a single individual with uh, dependents. Single is more like just single alone, one person uh, filing taxes just for themselves, and there's no uh, dependents and things. Um, so in the given problem, you'll have a different category, perhaps, and just make sure you pick the right column for whatever person you're given, uh, whatever category they fall into. So here's another example of doing the same thing, using this full table. Now this person uh, has a taxable income of 98400 <clears throat> it's a married taxpayer filing separately, so you could use that first column and go through the same calculation as before, just with different numbers. So you can watch this video if you want to see that worked out in detail, but it's the same process as the one up above. Okay, the last thing to worry about here is some extra pieces that get added on to this process. When uh, we talk about taxable income, the amount you actually earn is not your taxable income your taxable income is generally smaller. So there are two ways that you can reduce your uh, amount of tax that you owe. You can either take deductions, which reduce your taxable income, and we'll talk about detail in a second, but if you take deductions, that reduces the amount of income that gets taxed, so that means you'll owe less tax in the end. And then credits actually apply after you calculate your taxes. 
So if, for instance, you had deductions in the amount of $5,000, that would lower your taxable income by $5,000, which would be good, and you would end up paying less in taxes. But you wouldn't pay $5,000 less in taxes. You would pay some smaller amount because a, only a percentage of your income gets taxed. So if your tax taxable income drops by $5,000, you'll see a slight reduction in your tax bill at the end. But if you had a tax credit of $5,000, your taxes would actually drop by $5,000. So a tax credit is actually calculated at the end of the process, and every dollar you get in the credit lowers your tax bill by a dollar. So tax credits are more um, more valuable in that sense than deductions. They apply to more of your tax bill. So we're giving a really simplified view of this, an overview, but broadly speaking there's deductions and there's credits, and those are the two things to keep track of. So this table here, or this block, describes what I just said, that deductions are things that reduce your taxable income, tax credits are subtracted afterward. And there's a little diagram here, if you start with your whole gross income, that's the term that means all the money that you receive, um, employment, investment returns, side jobs, everything that you receive is your gross income. You put that all in, in one bucket. And then from that, you first remove your deductions. So then that comes down to your taxable income. So your taxable income is just the remainder after you've sliced off whatever deductions you can take. And then you divide your taxable income into those brackets. So you kind of divvy it up and take the right percentage of each part. So you take 10% of the first part, 12% of the second part, 22% of the third part, and so on. And once you add all those together, you have kind of this stack that you owe in taxes. And tax credits get sliced right off the top of that. And so the tax you owe uh, is reduced by your tax credits directly and sort of indirectly by your deductions. You can read through examples of deductions and credits, um, but in an example, you'll be told, here are the deductions, here are the credits, and uh, you just need to use those numbers. So here's an example, a quick example, if somebody earned 50000 and had 13000 in deductions and $500 in tax credits, you would start with their gross income, subtract the deductions to get their taxable income, then you would calculate your tax the same way we did in the last couple examples, using the tax table, and then at the very end you would subtract the tax credit. So that's, an, that's a step that's easy to forget, and a lot of homework questions that have tax credits, it's easy to forget to subtract the, the credit at the end, but if you watch out for that, um, you should be okay. So that's the basic idea. There's one other little thing to worry about, and that's the standard deduction versus itemized deductions. So itemized deductions is where you would look through this list of deductions that are available, and you would add up and say, okay, I can take this deduction and that one and this one, and so total I can take deductions of $8,000. Great. There's also a standard deduction listed in the table. So let's say you're a single taxpayer, and you add up your itemized deductions and you get $8,000. Well, you look at this and say, well, the standard deduction would be $12,400. Since that would work more in my favor, you're allowed to take this one, instead of your itemized deductions. So you can choose between the two, and you're always gonna pick whichever one is more, because you want more of a deduction um, to lower your taxable income by more. So the standard deduction is a way of providing for people who don't fit a lot of those categories, who don't have a lot of itemized deductions. Um, there's a standard one that you can choose instead, and so what you'll do is you'll add up your itemized deductions, and if they come up to more than the standard one in whatever category you fit, then you'll take your itemized deductions. If they don't, you'll take the standard. So that's the only other thing to keep track of with deductions. So you'll see an example here with all the details of going through and calculating itemized deductions. In this case, you're gonna pick the standard deduction and then go through kind of the same process of finding taxable income, the tax owed, subtracting the tax, uh, the tax credit, and getting your final answer. So you can Kind of follow that example for a full walkthrough of the kind of problems you'll see on the homework uh, that are similar from this section. And that's it for this section. There's a little blurb on tax withholding that you can read if you're interested, but it's not something that you'll be tested on. Uh, as long as you can work this example three, you'll be well set for the homework for this section.